Hi. Uh, today I would like to demonstrate how you can um, reliably decode the DAO combination of um, a DAO combination lock uh, if you have forgotten the code. And uh, this is a reliable method. Uh, it works every time. It does not require any guesswork at all. It doesn't require you to figure out any combinations or subjectively feel for clicks and so on and so forth. But there is one catch though, is that the lock must be open before you can decode it. So, um, however, there are ways to open it um, through various bypasses. So this is, an, uh, this is a master DAO combination lock. I think this one, most people will be quite familiar with it. Typically see it on school lockers, gym lockers and so on. And a lot of these locks actually have a master override key behind. Um, this is so that if, let's say, somebody in school loses a combination, the school can just open it up with the master override instead of uh, having to break, uh, cut open the shackle. So, something like this, um, for this kind of locks, the weakest uh, part of it is actually this master override because this is a very um, low security uh, keyway uh, and it is very easily picked. So as I will show now, just a wiper insert, thin wiper insert and a snake rig. Just push it in, wiggle it a bit. Okay, and now I've gotten the lock open. So what if the combination lock that you have is a variant that does not have um, the override key? Well, uh, then you should look at the space between the body of the padlock and the shackle, so uh, this part here. If you see a wide enough gap, you might be just able to um, stick in a thin piece of metal and actually push, just manually push the spring-loaded uh, locking paw out of the way. So right now, let me just jam it in. Okay, just a bit more. Okay, I think I've gotten it. Uh, the locking part of the way. I'm just going to pull. And here, we have shimmed the lock open. Well, it doesn't always work because sometimes in some models, the the more well-made ones do not have a large enough gap, but it's actually uh, something that you might actually see in some of the more poorly designed uh, or sloppier locks. So now, I have gotten this open. So how do I go about decoding, finding out what's the code inside? So to actually um, uh, find out, know how this works, you must actually know how the uh, lock is designed. So basically, this lock has um, three disks inside okay so uh, for example this one there are three discs each with a groove and when you turn to the first combination uh, turn to the first number the first uh, this is a line okay and then when you subsequently turn to the next two numbers you align all the grooves in a straight line and the position will be where um, at this position the grooves will be at this position which allows the locking mechanism to slide into the groove when you pull open the shackle so something like um, something like this after you set all the three wheels uh, the groove will be all in this position and then if you pull the shackle up this mechanism comes down and it allows the shackle to pop up uh, if it's in a locked position um, it will be like this so this uh, mechanism is not able to come down uh, when the shackle is pulled up thus the lock will remain closed so anyway, the aim, once you have uh, opened this, is to visually decode uh, the three discs. To turn the three discs such that you can see uh, the grooves are all aligned together. So uh, I'll demonstrate this now.
So this is a locking port and um, you can actually push it out of the way with, a, with an object because it's spring loaded. And when you push it out of the way, you can actually see that there are three discs inside. Maybe I turned it around like this. Be more easily seen. Yeah. So you can see that there are three discs. Uh. Okay can see and the aim of it is to rotate the block exactly in the way that you will operate it uh, rotate it three times uh, full rotation clockwise and until you reach the first number and then rotate it anti-clockwise one full rotation reach the second number and then clockwise again to the third number without one full rotation so use the same way and your goal is actually to make sure that all the grooves can be seen uh, through this hole all aligned together so I'm going to do it right now sorry if you're not able to see uh, properly inside uh, the lighting is not the best but I'm just going to turn rotate three times clockwise Yes, I have seen the groove of the first disc, which is the disc most at the rear of the padlock. And then I'll look at the number that it corresponds to. So it corresponds to the number of 14. So we write down that the first number is 14. This is not the actual combination, but I'll show you how to get it later on. Then from there, you rotate it anti-clockwise, one full rotation until you end up at 14. And then you will look inside again. This time you focus on the middle disc and you see, um, and you slowly rotate anti-clockwise until the groove is aligned with the groove of the first disc. Okay, I can barely make out the disc from here. So now when you turn the disc anti-clockwise, you should only uh, see the middle disc moving and I have actually already aligned it and let me just take a look again
no not yet Okay, managed to get the second disc aligned and the number is 38 which is what I'm going to write down and now for the third disc I'm going to move turn the dial clockwise Okay, so now um, you all may not be able to see properly, so i just describe what I see here. If you look inside, and you may need to push away this uh, locking pole to see better, you see that the groove of all three discs inside the padlock is aligned in one straight row. Okay, and the third number that's aligned at is um, 28. So now you've got three numbers. 14, 38, 28. Okay, so um, these three numbers corresponds with all three grooves aligned uh, around this angle over here, like this. Okay, however, this is not the position which the padlock will open. The padlock will open when the groove is aligned somewhere around this part so that the mechanism can actually drop down into the groove to open up the shackle. So you just have to make some adjustments to the number so that it will reflect uh, when the grooves are all actually in this position. So you basically um, do an aggregation, just uh, do an estimate and count around how many um, numbers would that be. So if you look here and it's inside, so you count from assuming uh, 24, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, maybe around 9 numbers, okay? So the key is that um, you actually need to um, deduct 9 numbers from uh, these numbers here, okay? So um, if you deduct 9, you get You get a 5 and you deduct 9, you get a 20, uh, 29, and then deduct 9, you get 19. 5, 29, 19. So, this is one of the combinations that you want to try. Uh, so, of course, what I calculated just now when I said that from here to here is about 9 numbers, it's just an estimation, and it also varies a lot based on the the exact angle which are looking into this hole to align the grooves and so you will need to um, if you try it and it doesn't work then you need to make some minor adjustments to those numbers that you have used here for your calculations so I'm going to try it first so 5 29 19 so the lock stays closed. So you know that um, this combination is not correct, but um, it will be somewhere, um, the relationships of these numbers will, should still be the same. And it, uh, the numbers, you just need to add or subtract to all these numbers. So for instance, um, let me try to uh, subtract this number further. So maybe I'll put it as a 4, 28 and 18. Okay, so let's try again. So you put it at a 4, 28, in, not open, 
so you can either decide to uh, add to these numbers or subtract I chose to subtract more so 3, 27, 17 3 27 17 doesn't work I'll try 2 26 16 2 26 and 16 and now the lock opens so of course if you move down the numbers and the lock suite doesn't open then you might want to try moving up so for example using counting a 6 30 20 and so on and so forth but it's around that range lah. and then the relationship between the three numbers should stay the same because that is when all the grooves of the three discs are aligned together so um, using this method you should be able to open a padlock uh, decode the padlock um, just trying a few combinations, maybe four or five combinations. Uh, yeah, so that's the trick. The only thing that you need is actually to be able to open the padlock somehow through some other means beforehand. So um, that's all I have for now. Thank you uh, for watching.